Right, I often get asked about my supplies. I get comments or questions and emails of people asking me what I use and which needles and what thread is best for this, that and the other. Um, <clears throat> so I was just about to make a basics video for my class, my new class, and I thought I would just do a quick one for you as well. I mean, theirs will be more involved, but I thought I would just go through it with you. Then it's always here if anyone has questions I can refer them to it. Now Cotton Abroader is my thread of choice all the time really, more 99.9% .9 of the time. This is white that I use uh, most, I go through so much of this you won't believe. So it's Cotton Abroader number 16. Cotton Abroader is a single stranded almost like a wool, it's very soft, it's beautiful. Now if you're going to buy the white, there's two colours of white, there's Blanc, B-L-A-N-C, or there's this one, which is B5200, which is a much brighter white. It's the one I prefer. It's the one I use. I can't get the camera line right there. But Cotton Abroad also comes in different colours. Um, so these are just two colours that you can get with Cotton Abroad. I've got loads of colours. Um, now, also, this is size 16, which is my preferred thickness. And this is the equivalent to two strands of embroidery floss the six stranded embroidery floss. Now Cotton Abroader comes in many sizes and some colours are only available in certain sizes. So for example this is a number 16, okay happy days because that's my preferred one, my favourite one. This is a number 25 which is a bit fine for me but because I want the colour then I, I bear with the fact that it's a lot finer. So the higher the number the finer the thread, okay that's with Cotton Abroader. So that's Cotton Abroader and then stranded cotton, I do use this, um, but not as much. Okay, so this is just six stranded cotton, you can get DMC or Anchor. I use DMC, no particular reason for that, I don't think. Well, there isn't, I just do. Um, if I could only get Anchor, I would be happy with Anchor. There's no, I don't think there's much difference between them, but I think if you're collecting a lot of colors, it's easier to stick with what you've got. So if I run out of this, it's just easier to buy DMC colour 741 as opposed to rooting around and trying to find out what the anchor equivalent is. So that's that. I also sometimes, not very often, use cotton pearl. Okay. Um, this is a highly twisted thread and it's got a sheen and it's quite strong, single stranded. But I don't use that very often. Um, hardly, hardly ever actually. And then I sometimes use things like this, crochet cotton doesn't necessarily respond amazingly to hand embroidery to be honest depends what you're doing with it but it has a tendency to shred and split but this would thread through the eye of a, a cruel needle or a chenille needle um, so like I say I just like to have it and then if I want to put a little bit of texture in something at some point then I'll use something thick like that and then for hand basting hand tacking or adding like tiny seed beads I use this now I used to always use Gutterman I like natural fibers I'm not a polyester fan this is 100% cotton and I used to use the Gutterman 100% cotton but I've recently discovered this DMC machine embroidery thread size 50 100% cotton I don't think there's a color reference on here uh, oh yeah it's B5200 again yeah same as the cotton abroader so and this is a dream it's such a dream I can't recommend it highly enough more so than the Gutterman and I won't use Gutterman again I'll just always use this it's fabulous absolutely fabulous so if you want to baste or have something beautiful to work with for tacking or sewing on tiny seed beads or something then I honestly amazing Obviously I've got embroidery hoops, loads and loads of them. Um, bind your inner ring, it helps to keep the fabric more taut in the ring. Um, I've got my window open, if you can hear a dog, I'm sorry, that's next door's dog. Okay, and then needles. I always have a supply of uh, bodkins or darning needles. I have Milner's needles for bullion loops. The good thing about these, well, the reason you need these for bullion loops is because the eye is the same size as the point, and that's very relevant when doing a bullion knot. And just normal embroidery needles of all different shapes and sizes. And somewhere over here, cross stitch needles with blunt ends. Um, they're always useful. If you're doing a stitch that involves weaving between your threads, they're very good because the the point is blunt and won't damage your thread. And then cruel needles, 
or chenille needles. I can't open that. Well, they can. They're in a, a little pouch. But these are needles with a very sharp point but a bigger eye. So like I said, these would be ideal. If I wasn't throwing them everywhere. These would be ideal for the crochet cotton. Um, these ones. So that's cruel needles or chenille needles. So that's it. Um, I just thought I'd share that with you because I do, like I say, I get asked a lot. So if I've got this now on, on my blog, it's a point of reference, isn't it? Um, so I can refer people to this. Obviously, I'll answer them. I'll say, oh, thanks for your query. I won't just ignore them. Uh, thanks for your query. I've got a video here if you want to look at it about my basics. It might help you a little bit. So there. So I hope you found that useful.